Russia has made China's air force stronger than ever to defeat U.S. superpower. Chinese air power these days is something to behold. In the course of just about 30 years, Beijing's aerial inventory has gone from quite obsolete to cutting edge. It's worth noting, moreover, that Chinese air power is but one tool that Beijing can wield in the skies. If its massive missile forces perform as expected, destroying adversary runways, then there will be few enemy aircraft getting into the air to contest the supremacy of China's fighters and bombers, or at least very few of them will be able to gain access to much of the Western Pacific. The Russia-China military cooperation has already fundamentally altered the balance in the Asia-Pacific region more than once. Moscow sold to Beijing four rather advanced destroyers and 12 extremely capable diesel submarines with all the related armament during the 1990s. This arms sale was facilitated by a relationship that existed between the two countries in the 1950s, which is when hundreds of vessels and designs were transferred from Russia to China. The same process has transformed Chinese air power, perhaps even more so. Russia has transferred more than 500 aircraft to China since 1990. These included large military transports, early warning aircraft, refueling aircraft, attack jets and fighter interceptors. Notably, that list does not include heavy bombers. But in that case, it should not be forgotten that China's current frontline H-6 and newly refurbished models K and N is derivative of the 1950s era 216 of the Soviet Air Force. Anyone who has any doubt that Soviet aircraft played a giant role in the development of modern Chinese air power should visit the fully refurbished Beijing Military Museum. Even as China proudly turns to its own indigenously designed fighter, the J-20, it's worth briefly reviewing the massive legacy of Russian aviation technology for the Middle Kingdom. According to one recent rendering in Modern Ships in edition number 16 of 2018 regarding that history, the very first two modern Russian fighter, Su-27 UBK, arrived in China on May 30, 1992. These aircraft became the prelude to the era of heavyweight fighters for the Chinese Air Force. The capabilities of these aircraft far outstripped the PLAAF's then inventory of J-6 and J-7 lightweight fighters. That was especially true in terms of range and weaponry. Imported fighter aircraft from Russia during the next two decades, including the Su-27 and Su-30, directly propelled the building and refinement of the Chinese Air Force's combat system. The flanker era was truly inaugurated in Chinese military aviation with the delivery of the second batch of 24 Su-27s in December 1996, according to this Chinese survey. It was at this time that Chinese aerospace engineers undertook to produce their own flanker, the J-11, under a production licensing agreement with Moscow. Still, that new Chinese indigenous Su-27 would have imported Russian radar, engine, and also weapons. Yet, after producing about 100 such aircraft, the Chinese complained that the backward radar and avionics equipment definitely could not meet the future requirements of the Chinese Air Force. The author admits that some tension resulted as Russian contractors wanted to maintain control of the program in China. Yet, Beijing pressed ahead with its own upgraded flanker design, the J-11B, which entered serial production in 2007. While it is claimed here that this aircraft was, in some respects, superior to Russian models of that time, this Chinese author also candidly admits that the J-11B still had many technical defects, not least lingering problems with the Chinese-made Taihong jet engines. Indeed, the Chinese purchase of the twin-seat Russian Su-30MK-2, transferred in 2004, to the Chinese Navy seemed to illustrate a continuing interest in Russian combat aircraft. On the other hand, a decade followed before Beijing would once more make a major purchase of Russian fighters. At the end of 2014, a contract was signed for 24 Su-35s at a price of US$2.5 billion. According to this Chinese analysis, Beijing assessed that the J-11 and J-10 aircraft were simply insufficient, and both the PLA Navy and Air Force concluded that the speed of military transformation was too slow. 
Chinese strategists particularly like the impressive combat radius of the Russian fighters, which boast the longest legs in the Chinese inventory. Thus, it was believed in Beijing that additional Russian combat aviation help could add flowers to the brocade. In late December 2016, the first batch of Su 35s arrived in China. According to this analysis, these jets first patrolled the South China Sea in February 2018. A few months later, on May 11, they joined other types of Chinese fighters in a bidirectional encircle beautiful Taiwan Island sovereignty flight exercise. Such extended high-profile missions undoubtedly demonstrated a high level of confidence that the PLOF put in the new aircraft imports from Russia. Still, the latest round of imported Russian aircraft seems to have got some Chinese strategists hot under the collar. After all, China now has not only its own fifth-generation stealth fighter, the J-20, but also wields the relatively new J-11D, not to mention the much-heralded J-16 strike aircraft. One rather skeptical appraisal appeared in the Chinese defense magazine Ordnance Science and Technology, edition number 19 of 2018. There, the author bemoaned China's continuing willingness to eat Soviet-era retreads, and viewed the recent purchase as a simple, friendly advertisement for Russian weaponry. Yet that piece concedes the electronic suite is much improved, while the other assessment praised the Su-35's enhanced metallurgy enabling even greater maneuverability, as well as higher reliability approaching Western standards. Unquestionably, China and Russia stand at an interesting inflection point with respect to their military-industrial relationship. For decades, the flow of expertise and equipment generally went in one direction. Can a more equitable arrangement be found? Could these two Eurasian powers put national pride to the side and discover major new efficiencies by encouraging wide-ranging collaboration, augmented integration, and specialization that takes into account each of the twin great powers' strengths and weaknesses? That's a tall order, to be sure, and may be well beyond what either country's leadership might be willing to contemplate in terms of the extant quasi-alliance. And yet no one can really doubt the enormous progress of Chinese airpower, enabled by the formidable plus-up that Russian aircraft have provided over the last three decades, not to mention during the 1950s. Let's not forget that was China's first and rather successful injection of concentrated military aerospace power and knowledge. In the near future, the PLOF could be ready to unveil two new bombers. But lest we forget China's current frontline bomber, an article in Modern Ships, edition number 20 of 2017, announced brazenly in its title that China's H-6N is capable of deep strike against America's Alaska. Welcome to the new Cold War. It seems as though we have successfully taught the Chinese, with ample Russian assistance, how to target the adversary's homeland so that the rubble will bounce. China has long been perceived as a problematic arms exporter, meaning that it has historically supplied weapons to countries that are on the United Nations' bad books. These include rogue states such as North Korea and Iran. Over the last decade, China has systematically rose as a significant arms provider and has moved from a donor of logistics and medical equipment to a critical provider of weapons and weapons systems. China stripped Russia to grab the second spot only after the United States, in Stockholm International Peace Research Institute's SIPRI's list of world's largest arms producers. The report was released on January 27 by the Swedish Research Center compiled credible data from 2015 to 17 on the value of arms sales by four major Chinese arms companies. The four companies account for sales, totaling $54.1 billion. This will place the firms among the top 20 military equipment manufacturers in the globe, putting China ahead of Russia in arms sales, behind only the US. SIPRI had excluded Chinese defense companies so far because the information on the country's weapons manufacturing had been unreliable and lacked transparency. Furthermore, Chinese defense firms have now become top exporters, offering military equipments to countries across the world while giving their American counterparts tough competition. China's leap forward came when Venezuela's president the late Hugo Chavez, in his mission to diversify arms supplies because of a fairly uncomfortable relationship with the United States, went to China for K-8 trainers and air search radars in 2008. 
In this way, the Chavez, and later Maduro, governments made broad military acquisitions from China, including transport airplane, armored personnel carriers and self-propelled artillery, some of which were deployed to crush dissenters in 2014. The American government has been reluctant to transfer state-of-the-art hardware to Latin America, with just Chile and two decades before Chavez came to office Venezuela operating F-16s and no other modern U.S. combat aircraft serving in the region. In fact, outside of the Chilean F-16 and some infantry gear, Latin American militaries are equipped with a stockpile of aging hardware in need of replacement. China's ability and willingness to supply modern military gear at highly competitive prices makes purchases from it very appealing. The Chinese has likewise been happy to offer to nations viewed as outcasts by American government and its allies, for example, Venezuela and Bolivia, and it is eager to offer financing bundles as an extra incentive. It is this mix of political assurance to enter the market, an agnostic way to deal with systems, a preparation to supply the whole plenty of equipment with not many limitations and the utilization of Chinese monetary organizations to encourage the acquisition of military equipment that makes China a considerable force to reckon. The increasing presence of Chinese arms throughout much of Africa comes at a time when the People's Republic of China PRC, is attempting to revamp its image through international engagement, deploying ever-increasing numbers to peacekeeping deployments throughout Africa. China is now the largest single contributor of personnel to UN peacekeeping, despite only having begun contributing to such operations in 1992. Although China has been a quiet economic presence in Africa for many years, building infrastructure at knockdown prices compared with Western actors, its engagement as a security player is still a work in progress.